VPR Radio. I don't know what y'all listening to, but where we at? Yes. Keanu, let's go. DJ Yakima. Yes, yes. We here. Internet never ever had problems until like just now. I'm saying FMI was just saying the same thing about how this has been going, like just weird, <laughs> you know? Oh man, that's been a very weird week. That is so funny. How are you doing though? Oh man, I'm just uh, I've been uh, actually I, I did a, a podcast the other day about this uh, Ahmad Aubrey case. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. Shall we? Shall we begin with that? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, let's do it. A, a, it's a pretty interesting case. Situation. Yeah. Very, very. You know, and uh, like I said, I've, de- I've dealt with a lot of cases like this um, working with a civil rights law firm. Right. And, but this one right here is a little more intricate and unique because of the elements that are, that are involved. Right. And uh, I, I think that right now what's happening is the, uh, a major light is being shed on uh, the um, stand your ground laws, yeah. the mm-hmm. um, the uh, citizens arrest laws, yeah. and a lot a lot of these gun uh, gun um, concealment laws and property uh, territorial territorial uh, property laws too. Mm-hmm. So you know sometimes it takes a case like this to really shed light. Because when you look at the stand your ground laws, I have I, I got I know at least about ten cases where black people who were standing their grounds and and followed the code all the way through are in prison right, right now. That's right. Wow. Absolutely. You know what I'm so we, we there's a there's a serious Not double wrong. standard yeah. in play, and a lot of these laws have put have really been put in place to protect white people. Absolutely. And that's what's really now being um, exposed. And not even just to protect white people so much, but as to allow them to be able to kill at will, right? The protection goes even yeah. further to yeah, allow them to yeah. get away with murder. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I call this, I, I call it vigilante justice. And yeah. there's, really, there's really no justice in, in vigilanteism. So it's like an oxymoron, really. Right. Mm. I'm, I'm seeing people come out and defend the, uh, the shooters of Mr. Aubrey and I was just like, people are coming out defending this. I'm like, if you watched it, I'm like, isn't it, isn't it like pretty aware of what happened? But they're, they're <laughs> going to defend their own. I mean, look how many happened. people defended like, Truman. <laughs> you know uh, what I mean? Uh, like that, that's a constant. Yo, they're going to have the people that stand behind them. And most, mostly they're these big Christian, right? Claiming Christian groups um, that stand. Yeah. Behind. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> I you. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Cut out, cut out uh, there's a, there's a there's a there's a movie on net, on Netflix about the um what's the name of this guy the subway, uh, the subway vigilante, vigilante. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, there's a docu there's a there's a documentary on Netflix that just came out a couple days ago about the subway vigilante. And so many people forgot about this case. This was a big case in the 1980s. Right. Where a, a white man got on the subway and he, uh, he was about to get robbed by like three black guys. Mm -hmm. And he pulls out a gun and just starts shooting. Last time, yeah. And, you know, it was like a massacre, but he was, he was championed by the whites and, and the police mm -hmm. and everybody. And um, it was a really big case because at the back at the angle, I'm not gonna lie, at that time, crime was like really high in New York. Yes, area. and especially and like, subways, right? It was really very bad. dangerous. You know, and, and when you can get robbed like any day, it, it was crazy. And a lot of people were scared. And a lot of people was like, you know what? We need more people like this. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it, it was outside of the, the scope. I mean, because you know, now, now you're looking at uh, self-defense law. That's right. Okay. And New York State does not have a self-defense law. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, okay. What? Yeah, yeah. So, so Florida and, and does, it, correct? Florida does. A lot of the southern states, believe yeah, it Yeah, that's all we think of. Again, the denominator, right? And, you know, and that's, that's one thing I did like about down south was I was able to, you know, because, you know, I'm a, I'm probably military and I love shooting and even as, as paramilitary, it's, it's, it's hard uh, being able to have a gun in New York City. Um, but, and, and they want to know if anything ever happens, say you get into a domestic dispute and, you know, somebody calls and says, oh yeah, you're already in the system as having a gun. So right. on the way, the, when the police are on the way to you, their whole thing, the back of their mind, they're not worried about the fight or nothing. Mm -hmm. They're prepared to have to kill you if they think that you're gonna shoot you got, them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And this is what I, this is what we call the culture of the call. So you have to be very careful when you, if you have to call the police, how you do it. One thing you don't ever want to do is say, "Oh, yeah, he's a retired veteran. He's crazy." Yeah. That already creates the the environment that's going to be set when and they get there. Right. Hostile. The hostility is already going to be there before they arrive. You know, he, oh, he, he he's on his he's on medication. You know, there's certain things you don't mm. ever want to tell the police. That's you know. so true. Okay. Do you do you remember that story of the young um, mentally unstable man? And I think he had a screwdriver, and he got shot like I don't know a ridiculous amount of times. It was down south, and the yeah, mother was I heard about wanting that. to get him back in the hospital because he was sick. But she said, you know, he's sick. He's got a screwdriver, and they came and pop, 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 pop out. Yeah, I, I, I saw I saw that case, um, and it was crazy because right around that time, it was about three or four other cases like that. Mentally, oh, aren't there was, always three or four? Yeah, they in the media, right? Yeah, Not the ones yeah, we haven't yeah. even heard about that aren't published. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I was saying about this um, Ahmad case. How, how many cases we just haven't heard of. That's right. And don't know about. That are similar to this. You know, I get calls all the time about so many cases that never even are, are seen or heard of. Yeah. And I'm dealing with a lot of these cases, but it's just hard when you, you know, when you don't have that, you know, uh, that, that when the case is not strong, you know, but sometimes you, you don't want to risk the, 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 the chance of putting out a video too because in this case right here yeah. there's a there's a uh, there's a, a potential um case where this video might not be uh submitted in court right because it's been circulated and yeah, yeah so it, it might it's, not be it's, admissible. you know yeah so I, yeah. I always tell people you know you got to be careful how you come into court yeah uh how you proceed with the case your, your attorney should really have full autonomy until you know, he's able to say, okay, now we're going to do this. But, you know, a lot, like I said before, a lot of people always come to me like, oh, I, I want to be on uh, TV. I want Reverend Shaw to, to do a press conference. And I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's so much <laughs> we have to do before, mm -hmm. before we, we get, to, get that to that point. point. Yeah, that's all I would do. Yeah. Can't just jump the gun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm really starting to feel like the press conferences, the gatherings, you know, the family, the, the community, um, gatherings that come together, they come, people seem to be interested for the moment, but the longevity isn't there. And there's so much of this happening around the nation, not just in New York, not just in Florida, not just in Georgia. You know, it's like, 
I feel if, if we don't come together as a full community, and I'm talking about people of color in general, because we are the biggest target in this country, if we don't come together and stick together, like we were doing in the 50s and 60s, when, when we had to, and to assure that our neighbors and, and you know our best friends and stuff weren't killed, we had to stick together. I just feel like it's such a lost cause. What do you feel? I don't mean to be pessimistic, but I know, you know, you're heavily well, involved in activism yeah. and <laughs> NAN. And, 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 and I get your feelings yeah. because I know that you are a part of a huge, you know, community leadership. What yeah. do you think about the, the input from the community and the actual well, action? Let me say, all right. All right, first of all, first, first of all, I, I love uh, Reverend Shopton's ideology about um, how he moves, what cases, and how it affects the family. Mm -hmm. uh, Trayvon Martin, Amadou Diallo, Eric yep. Garner, we've stood with those families from beginning all the way till the end. Absolutely. And we're, and we're still standing with them. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we, we don't, we're, we're not just here for the photo op. We're well, not, I know and, that. And I'm, not, I'm not talking no, about No, no, I'm not, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they, they are, no, there are people who are, who yes. manipulate the circumstances, who try to utilize the, the family to, to get yes. credibility, oh yeah, those guys too. Of course, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, real action. So, you know, do what you but do. Yeah. one thing we can we can never ever give up. Um, that that's like you know, even if it seems like a lost cause, just just imagine if 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 Martin Luther King gave up. Right. Well, I'm not saying let's give up. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying twenty how thirty years. We, no, no. I know. I'm just, <laughs> to unify to actually be be the most productive and really break through. I mean, how do you see that happening for us as a people in this country? And I know that's a loaded question. Kiana, yeah, I was, it, it very, it, very loaded. It is, yeah, yeah. You have to look at it now. Probably with no the coronavirus. answer. But, people don't uh, want to go to work. And people that don't want to go to work and we're still divided, even though it's our debt. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, anybody that can answer that question right now deserves to be elected president. I agree. Of the United I agree. States. I agree. Right. But, you know, we're not, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that was a, a complex yeah. question. But you know what? What you know when I what I always encourage people to do, because I've inspired a lot of people to to get into activism. Yeah. And I've inspired a lot of people to get active altogether. Uh, James, hello. There you go. And you know I, I tell them, listen, the best thing you can do, you know, you don't have to come to 145th Street in Harlem and, and stand with us. Right. The best work that can actually be started and be done is right in your own community agreed mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying sometimes you don't have to start in your building uh you know you can start by organizing um you know a, a, a board in your building right you know then branching out to the community connecting with other uh organizations that are are local you know everything i know people that left their state to come to harlem to, to and i said yo yeah. Absolutely. There's, there's problems back where you were That's that right. need to be handled too. Don't, don't do you know it. Everybody can't be in the hall. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and same thing with Brooklyn. And you know, I said, listen, if we all started where we were rooted, started where we live, because you know your community better than anybody. You probably know everybody in your community. Mm -hmm. It's easier for you to connect with somebody in your own community than yeah. outside. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Then. What you leave outside the community, you're starting from square. You're like nobody somewhere else, you, you know, and nobody's going to listen to somebody who's nobody somewhere else. Right. And I say that nobody, anybody's nobody. I'm just saying you, you've, you've, been, you've lived somewhere. You've earned some kind of respect yeah. and credibility among the people that you live with. Yeah. And, you know, once you decide that I'm going to, I want to be a part of change in my community, you got even more clout and, and more respect on that level. That's you, right. You know what I'm saying? So if enough of us really started off in our communities, we would eventually connect dots with other communities that are that are banded together as a whole. And this this is how it used to be done. This is one of the big things back in the in the, in the 50s and 60s and 70s with the, the black churches, which were community based and started outreach within themselves that branched out to connect with other churches. Right. And and that was the that was the center of a lot of the black communities was the church. True. And, and you know? I feel like it still is. And religion has taken a back seat. Well, well, uh, but let me ask you, let me I, ask I you. I feel like, you know, religion had back seat. Sorry, FMI, go ahead. Say it again. No, no, no. I'm gonna say you, you said the basis of religion 
where you know used to meet and convene. But religion has taken a backseat. I was at least in my generation of dealing with people, they're not really spiritual as much anymore. Oh, I, yeah, I was born yeah. up in a Catholic family. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I went to church every Different Sunday, Sunday, went to Catholic school. I, I, you know, I, I was in it. My mind prayers. Very much yeah, so. yeah. I'm gonna tell you, I was I was the only black I was I was the only black altar boy That's great. <laughs> in my Catholic school. So I, I know what you mean. Uh, but I, I I wasn't really talking so much about the religious okay. uh, prospect. I was just I was just talking more about how the church was the gathering point for community back yeah. then, which which led out to other things. You know what I'm saying? Well, let me ask you a question because I think FMI made a great point, you know, and, and not just about religion, but that even though the church still may be the altar of the community, that's usually for more of the older people that have been in the community. The younger millennials and the new Z generation has broken away from a lot of that. How do you feel that yeah, we yeah. can, because I'm going to give an example. Pop smokes untimely murder, right? You mm -hmm. saw all of these young people come out in droves, right? To yeah. show their respect for his death. I loved being able to see them gather that way without there being any sort of destruction or anything going on. And the fact that they could do so peaceably does show you it can happen. How do you feel that we reach these new uh -huh. generations and helping them to understand their importance and the roles they need to play in activism and being there in their community? Well, that's very, it's very funny you should ask that question because a lot of people have asked me uh, what made me get back into acting, mm -hmm. right? And one of the, you know, first of all, you know, I've I've been acting all my life, and I, it's something I w I was meaning to get back into. Yeah. But one of the things was I saw uh, people like Fifty Cent, uh, Puff Daddy, um, Takashi Six Nine, a lot of these very influential rappers that were that had an overwhelming. Uh, mm -hmm. fan base of support from the, the young generation. Yeah. yeah. But none of these guys were giving that generation the, the proper messages, mm -hmm. the proper guidance. Agreed. You see what I'm saying? So I said, okay, you know what? I'm over here doing all I can to try to reach that demographic. Mm -hmm. And I've got a, a nice little crowd, but I, if I had the message that they had, I could really give them the message, give them the understanding. Um, and I said, you know what? It's the perfect time for me to get back in the game yeah. on an acting tip mm -hmm. to be able to reach a point where my visibility is 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 you know greater. Yeah, you know right. What I'm saying? Right. Now I'm not, I, but I was never. My focus was never like I just want to be famous. But you know, I'm a real actor, <laughs> right. and if I was to get to that point of yeah. of more fame, then that's more notoriety and visibility for me. And then I then I can captivate that audience and say, okay, now. Absolutely. Here's the message, you know, or, or, or I could give it to them. I've already got, I've already created the platform for social media where I promote black history every single day of the year. That's you know, right. that was specifically for the youth, like, mm -hmm. because that's where they're at. They're online. Okay, cool. That's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to feed them. And yeah. I have a, a, I have a big following of, of, of youth that hit me all the time. Like, wow, man, they never taught us this in school. And, and, and it makes and it, 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 it encourages and them to want to know more. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm in the process of, you know, taking it to the next level on the acting tip in order to be able to have a bigger audience of, of youth. And I, I also encourage anybody who has a major social, social media platform to identify with somebody who has a message for the youth and bring them on and let them, let them, let them address your crowd. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because these guys have millions of followers and, and, on, and are yeah. promoting violence, are promoting all this negative stuff. And I'm challenging problems. all celebrities to yeah. identify with somebody who's doing something positive that the kids need to see and bring them onto your platform and, and let the kids listen to them. That's, you know, that's the I'm going to be starting a, a campaign for that. Yeah, I love that. And that should be the challenge. Yes, yes. I'm going to be I, really just like, say, doing that. <laughs> I, I, really applaud, I really applaud you because you don't hear too many people say that. I want to be able to take my fame and my notoriety in whatever genre 
of this entertainment game so that I can use it in a good way yeah. to our youth. You don't see that. If you had more of that, I don't think yeah. that would be- Like right now, you know, I've got my- Yeah, right now I got my uh, my docu my uh, police brutality documentary is almost done. I'm like right. literally in the editing phase right now. I can't wait. I can't wait to get this thing out there. It's gonna really be a big, you know, documentary because it's, it's telling the truth. And it's exposing uh, not only NYPD but a lot of police departments around the United States that are, are mm -hmm. doing a lot of underhanded things. You know. Yeah. A lot of corruption. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that? sensitivity training and more thorough psychological review would be beneficial in helping to possibly prevent some of the violence and and, and pull of our people from these officers well you know what um i, I got a whole thing on that uh but i i've actually uh spoken to several politicians already about legislation that needs to be signed into order because a police officer has a psychiatric evaluation during police academy. Right. And after that, he doesn't have another evaluation until he years stop. later when something like happens. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So he shoots My thing is, if we, can, if we can get... Don't you um, think a situation training should be a thing where they have to be put in certain environments and you know, they, they do it in repetition in order to know how to de-escalate situations. I think that would be a positive way in order to at least cut down people's house when people are sleeping. And it's always a people of color. So I, I think they should maybe look into like situational training more based on that. Dealing with other ethnicities constantly, you know what I mean? Amen. You know what, on my documentary, I got a guy who was a uh, uh, who's a, a DC marshal, okay. and he worked on he worked on a bunch of major <clears throat> operations, drug busts, and stuff like that. On my documentary, he's saying out of his mouth, he said, "Listen, I know where these white drug dealers are. Why don't we go get these guys?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, yo, when you see this, you're gonna you're gonna be laughing real hard. So. He's in this big board meeting with all these top cops, right? Yeah. So they say, okay, every, everybody out of here except him. <laughs> so everybody leaves out, and then he's like with the top guys, and they say, yo, listen, man. We, they, we, uh, first of all, if we go kicking in their doors, their, their, peop their, their people know, uh, they know lawyers, judges, they'll shut our whole operation down That's if right. we do that. And, and, and he said, listen, we got to... We got to touching hands. Yeah, we said we got to stick to what we know. Okay, nobody's nobody's trying to protect these people right here. We got a system already in play that accommodates this. Yep. Okay, and my, my guy was so devastated, he like almost cried. He said because he he couldn't believe that they actually told yeah. him that, and they really meant it. They really, you meant know. It. So yeah. he's like he had a list of these white drug dealers, white people that couldn't. He said, "Look, I know where they at." <laughs> They say, yo, listen, the system is already in play. We, 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 you know, we, we go with the least amount of resistance, okay? Even if somebody black was to come stand up for these people, we would, we would, we would be able to pay them off some kind of way or, or get them out the picture or bring up something on them that will defame their character so they would have to step aside. But this is a better route. This is the easier route, and it's in the line of, of, of what the, the money is already financing. So... My guy's like, wow, That's this crazy. is crazy. And I'm a, and, and he was a part of it. Surprising. You know, and he couldn't believe that he it turned away. Down like that. Unbelievable. You know. So Let, let's talk more about your crazy. job. But Keanu, don't you think Oh okay, go ahead, man. No. Oh, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. No, we're gonna talk to you in a documentary. Go ahead. Um I, I just want uh, the the document is called Middlemen. What what made you what made you start? Yeah 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 okay. So the document. Oh. Uh, what made me want to do the documentary was um, I had I was a victim of police brutality. And uh, yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Go on. Okay, I was a victim of police brutality, and 
um, that whole situation was so devastating to me. Yeah. Because I didn't think that it could happen to me. I'm not a criminal. Like, I, I, this is not even my reality. So I thought. Right. You know, yeah. and that's why I always tell people, you know, <laughs> God, God will put you into in, in positions to, to either teach you a lesson or to show you something that you need to see. That's right. And I really needed to see this hands on to, to know that this happens to, this could happen to anybody. Yeah. You know, I totally, I didn't fit the mo the profile at all. And as I'm going through the situation, it was very agonizing because, you know, it was like, yo, this is crazy. The whole time I'm like, I can't even believe this is happening. Right. Yeah. You know, and the way that the officers responded was like, yo, we just got to stop. Like, so at that time I was producing a TV show on NBC, uh, which was filming five nights a week on Times Square. Um, you know, it was a really successful run, uh, two seasons. And in the heat of this whole situation, this thing was so devastating to me that I said, you know what? I'm going to put that on hold for a minute. And I got to get into this whole, because first of all, I ended up having to fight a case. They, they planted evidence on me and everything. Unreal. You know, besides beat me up. Right. They planted evidence on me. Yeah. And then I had to vindicate myself before I could even start the lawsuit process. You know what I'm saying? And uh, did, that, did was, that was that was about a three year process prison? altogether. Did you did you think at any point during that time that you said to yourself like I might really wind up having to do jail time, or did you have confidence in your legal team so much that you were like, "There's no way in hell." Yeah. yeah. Well, what 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 I found out was that, uh, that's crazy. That's what I found out. <laughs> After getting beat up, I, I said that I, I, I could have faced a, a whole year on Rikers Island. Jeez. That was like, you know, so this is another reason why. I, cause, is, is that, that's not me, is it? No, that's FMI. Go ahead. Right. We hear you. We just all have so to. So, what, what happened was um, th there was two charges uh, resisting arrest and open container, right? So the open container was this beer bottle that they said they saw me drinking, which was a lie. Right. So when I get to jail, uh, my lawyer says, you know, I just came from evidence. I'm like, evidence? What? what? Evidence for what? He said, they just showed me the, the beer bottle that you was drinking. I, I said, Yo, are you serious? They was like, he's like, yeah. I said, okay. Now, you tell the district attorney. If he finds one of my fingerprints on that bottle, I'll take the charge. Amen. And that's pretty bold. So, I know you ain't doing it, but that's pretty bold. Said they threw it out. <laughs> I said, of course they're going to throw it out. My fingerprints are not on that bottle. And, and in a situation saying? like so that. He said, wow, nobody ever challenged the open container before. <laughs> that's crazy. In a situation you know, like that, how don't... Um, I said, nobody ever cha challenged the open container? Right. Nobody ever challenged having stuff planted? Like, what? It's absolutely crazy. It's a thing that they're so sensitized to it when they're doing quotas that and that getting that arrest is an extra hundred or whatever the case may be, them not having to do mandatory OT. So they're not having to lose their vacation hours. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and that's for them. That's that's yeah, what they yeah. have to do. You know, it, it, it's a shame, especially how we're treated in New York. You know, people of color just being stopped, uh, being pulled out of cars randomly, being questioned while your other friends are just like, oh, don't worry. You know, I'm Caucasian. They don't stop. <laughs> that's our reality as black men and black women, especially in New York. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's true. Um, yeah. And I've I seen it, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, it's kind of sad, you know, because, you know, th like the worst part about it is if you're a taxpayer, you actually do pay their salary. Right. Yeah. Especially you're paying this is what we seem to forget. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody come in, it, yeah, yeah. if somebody comes into your house right now to, to fix something, uh, do a repair, and they, they, they just say, okay, and they just pull out a, a set of handcuffs and, and start cuffing you. <laughs> and you're like, hold on, man. You're here on, you know, in a different capacity. Like, it, this is not what you're getting paid for. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. 
it's uh, sometimes you have to like really um, break down how this whole system is working. And but this, this is one of the main reasons I had to do this documentary because I had to highlight a lot of things that are going on with these police departments, not just NYPD, because like mm -hmm. I said before, a retired police officer can be hired by any other police department throughout the United States and become a consultant for that police department and show them how they get away with all the stuff they get away with in New York. Mm -hmm. And this is how James, it's happened. Let me ask you a question. Have you received any backlash? Because when it comes out, you know, has anyone reached out to you that's in law enforcement to say, hey, you know, what do you, you know, are you you're gonna release this, this and the third? Have you had any backlash from that, especially online or anything like that? Well, man, listen, you know, I, I, I've never had any backlash. Um, and and I, I think it's major mainly because of uh, my alignment with um, National Action Network, but also whenever I'm speaking about police brutality or, or on any level, even a documentary, one of the things I always tell people is all cops are not bad. Okay, that's number one. And one of the biggest problems we have as activists or as civilians who are speaking out against NYPD or any other police department is we, we tend to say, look, like, F the police. Mm -hmm. We can't really say that because all cops are not bad. Right. You know, and I'm, I'm always very clear in making a distinction of, of how we have to go about, you know, doing this because if it's, let me tell you. That, Black Lives Matter. Go ahead. You know, but, you know, and that's the one. Again, you, there's certain cases of other level. Okay. Now, you know, now all I could, all I do, I'll speak the truth. When it comes to it. anything I say can be validated and, and to be shown to be a proven fact. Right. I'm not out here trying to provoke the police. Like I said, there are a lot of good police. I met a lot of good police. And, you know, even when I played on the TV show uh, Blue Bloods, mm -hmm. I, I was, Dang. you know, I worked alongside some very good police officers. The community affairs cops have some great police officers, of course, because they don't have to, they don't have to have a quota, you know, but still, they have, they have to, you know, engage with the community. And yeah. I, I like, I'm, I'm always making a conscious effort to let people know that all police are not bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I try to do the same thing because, uh, you know, I also do work with many and know many. But right. I've seen yeah. the, the shift in the culture when, when we started Black Lives Matter, then mm -hmm. they created All Lives Matter, then they created Blue Lives Matter. And mm -hmm. I, when I've seen that started to happen, the divide, yeah, and I was yeah. just like, wow, a counter argument in order but, but to see, now... But right. you gotta, but you, as soon as Black Lives Matter came out, it yeah. was already... Uh, labeled as a domestic terrorist group. Crazy. Okay, so it's like you're, you're labeled as a terrorist, which means that which means that the police don't have to respect you, you know, and, and that's 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 how. Things for something, it's always oh. like you know yeah. we're aggressive. We want to oh, kill yeah. somebody. <laughs> you yeah, know, and <laughs> always quick, quick. You know, and that's why Trump I won't say there's a bunch of good guys in that crowd. He will not say there's a bunch of good guys in that crowd. But if yeah. it's another crowd, oh, it, there was a bunch of good people in that crowd. Some were bad, but most were good. Yeah. Well, Trump loves no, we, we won't say that when it comes to a black guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's, that, that's that white supremacy. That's yeah. that white, white supremacy all over again. It is. You know what I'm saying? And, and we got we to gotta, we, we fight against that, too, because it's just getting to a point where it's getting out of control. A lot of stuff is getting out of control right now. Yeah. And, and it's reflecting on this um, Amar, um, Ahmad Aubrey case. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So let, that's let, why we got it. That's why it's very important for that case. Yeah. No, I just wanted to say, let's, let's touch on that it, um, it, real quickly. And then we and it's to tough. You, you know. I'm sorry, guys. I just don't want us to run out of time while you're in the middle of speaking. Okay. We're going to have to take a quick break. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Only. But I did want, want you to touch on that um, situation briefly while we have the, our last few minutes before we take this quick break, James, on the Ahmad um, Aubrey case. Okay, so some specific questions about the case? I'm just like, what, what are your thoughts on it? No, I'm trying to figure out when... To hit the media. Uh, 
All right, say that again. I said, I know it took a few months to hit the media. What are your thoughts yeah, on the connection? Like yeah. super choppy. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Let Let's take a break and just get um, to our new Zoom link. Ten weeks. <laughs> Because I know, like, my audio is chopping up, too. I want to be okay. able to be clear for everyone. Uh, so, so we'll reconvene well, in like three minutes. FMI, yeah. set up a new link. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. All right, All right you guys, thank you for watching. Um, I am just going to end this meeting. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be back on in the next few minutes. We've been having a lot of... Um, a lot of connectivity issues so i apologize for the lagging but on my side on james's side it's just been that kind of afternoon but of course we thank you for tuning in to dj fmi and your girl kiana the goddess to watch vpr radio we're here live every single thursday 1 to 3 p.m eastern standard time and keep it locked because i'll be right back so go get yourself a drink or a snack have you ever considered starting your own podcast Hey everyone, it's your girl Kiana the Goddess. When I was getting VPR Radio up and running with DJ FMI, we had so many questions about distribution on Apple, Spotify, Google, and all the other podcast platforms. We wanted to get sponsors and advertisers and a place to publish our podcast so there would be a central hub to access the audio. Then I found Anchor and all our questions about podcasting and the next steps were answered. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, distributing, and monetizing your podcast. It's 100% free and super easy to use. Trust me because I do it. Through Anchor, we've received distribution for VPR Radio on all major podcast platforms, and they even alert us to new sponsors. Every week, I upload our audio, and our audience can go back and access the shows in case they missed the live stream. I love it. Try it for yourself by going to anchor.fm slash start. Sign up and get your podcast started the right way. I'm so glad we did. And I know you will be too. That's anchor.fm slash start. Go check it out. At FMI. Yeah. James, the last song you've listened to. At least you need to know that because we are a hip hop show. The last song you've listened to. You said the last song I've listened to? Yes, the last song. Uh, what was it? Uh, earlier today, um, "Rising to the Top" by Kenny Burke. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, I'm an old school. I look, old, old school is my favorite. Like Frankie Beverly Mays. Uh, you know. Beverly Mays. I go. I go back. That's one of my favorite songs. But I, I love old school, and, and and there's a reason for it. Um, it, it's got, it's really the uh. The, the Does it have something to do with the message in the music back then? Yeah, it has a lot to do with the message, but it also has a lot to do with the the uh, the frequency of the music. Mm. Good. And, Explain uh, the frequency of the music. Explain, please. Okay, so uh, if you look if you look at uh, Michael Jackson, Prince, The Beatles, uh, Elvis, a lot of the great like legendary superstars, man. These guys uh, were able to to reach a higher level of success because yeah. because uh, a lot of the music back then was set on a frequency that resonated with love yeah. and resi- resonated with mm. harmony. Okay, um, they changed the frequency uh, in order. By they. Uh, well, it was a collab- it, it was a collaboration between some of these uh, secret organizations and the, the major record labels. Talk about it. And when they changed the frequency, the frequency went from a frequency of love to a demonic frequency. That's and right. And what, what our, what our a generation... demonic. Of, That's a strong word. No, it, 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 it's literally a demonic frequency. It started back in the days when they used to spin the records backwards. Backwards. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Oh, so I know that. I know that, yeah. Yeah, that demonic frequency uh, can affect a person on a on a serious level, and I'll, 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 the music that we listen to now, it it it, re- it doesn't allow it, that music to resonate on on soul vibration level. Right, it's about hate and anger. Yeah, and all, a lot of this came about when uh, gangster rap was re- was reintroduced mm-hmm. in order to capitalize. Uh, and benefit the prison industrial complex. Right. So 
uh, wow. and this is this is serious. I mean, like, it's it's, real it's hit, you know, this is a take I've never heard. This, yeah, this is a, no, this is a take I've never heard. That's how I'm intrigued serious. by it. I'm now, sitting here now like you're hearing it from James <laughs> Cool Breeze Gray, <laughs> Breeze Gray, and you believe it, right? I'll be telling you. Go ahead, oh, no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't just do Black History now. No, I know. You, <laughs> you know, but I, 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 I became a, a, a music lover. Like I fell in love with old school music before I even really got introduced to hip hop, because mm -hmm. my parents, I just don't know what their music, and I didn't know, but I, at that time, what it was. Mm -hmm. Of course, the message, and I'm, I'm, I'm a musician too, right. so a lot of those songs were playing live instruments, and I have a great appreciation for bringing back. Like right now, I'm petitioning right now to bring back those music programs into the public cool. schools of New York City. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Because guess what? Every time- That would, that would change a lot. Well, let me tell you, every time a child plays a musical instrument, they have access to brain power that the average child doesn't. That's right. Okay. And not just that, but the, but the power of music is that it can bring down stress levels. So for children, not just children that are imbalanced yeah. or have ADHD, but for children that grow up in, in, in violent communities and violent environments, this can become a way to even open up um, their ability to learn better. Music oh, yeah, no, no, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it's a direct process of that yeah. because it's unlocking parts of the brain and allowing you to have greater uh, uh, access to the brain function yeah. by... You know, it, so it, it's, 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 it's actually a little higher than what the potential would be from reading a lot. The next level is like playing a musical instrument. That's right. So if you look at this, like when I was a kid, my mother said, okay, you want a, you want a, you want a video game or you want a, a, a drum set? Yeah. And I chose the drum set. And that drum set took me around the world three times with major artists, you know, enabled me to set up a, a program to where now I have my own marching band and I'm teaching the youth how to how to play music and how to be a part of something they uh, positive. Need they need that you know more saying? than ever. Yeah, if you had that at a young age, it definitely would change the way you view the music industry and understand how to approach yeah. it better. Yeah. Instead of just, you know, not looking at the hoop dreams or the the exactly. I need to be a rapper with the with the huge chain with all the models and the crashes. That's what I grew up seeing. I grown up watching Biggie. So when I think yeah. of success, that was the person I aligned with success. You know what I mean? That's all I, had. Yeah, I definitely yeah. had to ask you a few things about that when it came to yeah. music. And I know you watch Matter it now. Fact, yeah, yeah. Me, me, and, me and Biggie Smalls share the same birthday. So, hey. uh, next, so next, next, thir next Thursday is yeah. our birthday. Matter of fact, it's uh, me, Biggie Smalls, Ron Isley, Max B, Mr. T, uh, Havoc from Mob Deep, nice, and uh, Fats Waller. And uh, Loretta Lynch, who's the first uh, black um, attorney general of the state of New York. Well, that is, well, go ahead. Do we have some? <laughs> first female. We don't have a clapping button, right? So, yay. I know, yeah, no, 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 I hit, I hit I, I share my yeah. birthday with Cardi B. So Whoa. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, no, hey, Cardi B does stuff for the community. Y'all don't matter. No, 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 no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. When I <laughs> seen her with Bernie Sanders, I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I, and yeah. I mean, I was just like, she's trying. A lot no, of I, these I, other I, musicians I, I, aren't. She's my other yeah. side. <laughs> what, yo, you know what? One thing I love about Cardi B is she she just keep, she keeps it real. She she so says real. what's on her mind. Absolutely. And I love she's that. like, yo, this is me. Accept me. Love me for who yeah. I am. She, yeah. she is, 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 is crazy as she may be sometimes. She's not fake. No. And that's one thing I respect about her. Me too. I can always respect real because you can. Yeah, you, yeah. I can identify with it. I can't identify it with fake. Now, James, now when you sit yeah. back and you're watching the state of hip hop now, because you seem you're a musician yourself. Yeah. Which which newer acts do you like? Okay. And it doesn't mean in the last year, it could be the last ten years. <laughs> what newer acts do you like? Um That's all I'm asking. Doesn't matter if it's in hip hop or anything like that. You know what? There's a rapper in Louisiana who is amazing and is a light skinned brother with with dreads, man. Um, Louisiana. Yeah, man. Uh, he made I right, he he made a video that went viral, and it was about the music industry. And all these all these executives were were at the boardroom table. He comes in there to get a record deal, and they trying to make him sign it. And he and he's like looking at and he's like, Nah, I'm not signing this. I'm not selling my soul. Right. What's this guy's name, man. Um. B one. 
D1. D1. I think, yeah, if you Google D1, um, Louisiana right rapper, now. this guy is the only one. But and you know what? I like I like uh, Dave East, you know, because he's all, not only because he's from but, my my area. Oh, I'm about to say y'all stick together, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's you how I heard funny? you say Max B. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, oh, I love I can't I love Max B. But um, Dave East actually played I uh, played an episode of uh, that Wu Tang joint with him, and uh, we we got to really top it up, you know. Nice. But uh, this guy that's, that's amazing, man. Did, did you find him? His name is D One. D One. His name is D One, uh, and he's from Louisiana. Yeah, he's a rapper. How does he spell it? D One. I think it's D E E and a number one. Oh, D E. Tama K said he has the Sally May song, so maybe if you if you Google it that way, so he's familiar with them. Thank you for um for chiming in on that. Sally May. Can Yo, we? All right, let me tell you. He, about... he got a, he got some amazing songs, but he's a he's a conscious rapper that's really making uh, an a, a, a impact. Like he's doing a whole school tour right now where he's, you know, focusing on the high schools and giving them a good message, good. you know, and, and it's not, it's not to the point where it's like corny or nothing like that. He's really like, they love him, Good. you know, and, and even the hardcore guys can like, yo, we like this kid, you know, I need that right now. We really no, I see him now. Yeah. Can we oh. talk about um, the beginning of your of your career and acting, how that came about and like to where it is now. I know earlier you were talking about how you'd like to use it um, as you do more serious acting and, and go further in your career, how you would love to be able to utilize your platform um, to reach these children and give them a better message, which we're talking about. Oh, yeah. But um, I, I love the story and our, our guests our <laughs> here didn't get to hear it. So if we could um, talk about that, I'd love to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, back in the, early 80s um my Den denzel washington's he's from mount vernon and that's i'm originally from mount vernon too right uh P puff that puff daddy there's a bunch of mount vernon heads that like relocated to harlem <laughs> right 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 <laughs> but, so close <laughs> <laughs> and then took harlem and claimed it yeah yeah so a lot of people think of harlem but i'm originally from mount vernon right and um denzel washington's mother's uh beauty salon got burglarized one time and she went to the police. Yeah. They they didn't really do anything about it. Oh, ho hold on one second. Hold on one second. Sure, no problem. I think he's got somebody at the door. You want to play some music at the mic? That's the DJ. <laughs> no <problem>. I've <laughs> never been in. Ah, I got you. Maybe. Oh, man. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> guys, checking my phone. Uh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's all good. So, um, no problem, no problem, no problem. No problem. I'm, so, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, Denzel Washington's mother's uh, beauty salon got burglarized. Yeah. Cops didn't do anything about it. My father yeah. was the president of our block association. So, um, when she came to my father's block association meeting, and she said, you know, Mr. Gray, I, I wonder if you can help me. Uh, my, my beauty salon was burglarized. And he's like, no, he called the police commissioner like right on the spot mm -hmm. and got the case reopened. They caught the guys like two days later. Mm -hmm. And she was like so happy. So her and, my, her and my mother and father became friends at that point. And she realized that, you know, we, we, uh, my, my family was a lot of, lot of us, nine of us all together. And she said, you got your kids, children are so well behaved. And she said, you know, Denzel's coach, acting coach, has uh, a program for children, too. And I want, I want to recommend your children to uh, study with her. You know, we didn't know uh, how serious that was, you know. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, kid, yeah at that point, yeah. <laughs> Little did you know. <laughs> and uh, we, ended up, we, we ended up, like, now, what we, what, the way that his mother uh, saw us the first time, we had put together a, a play that we did, like, you know, we scripted and everything. And we, you know, because my mother hated television. Mm -hmm. So she would always get rid of every TV she could, uh, uh, every, every chance she could. So we, did, we, we started reading a lot of books and, 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 and being real creative as kids. Mm -hmm. And we would put on these plays, man. And mm -hmm. we had to, we, we tapped in, into our imagination and creating and stuff like that. Right. And that's something that's very, very good for the early childhood developmental brain process. Absolutely. Uh, you know, that's been taken away because we give our children 
so much TV that it 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 doesn't challenge them to create. So much TV, tablets. You know and, what I'm saying? Right, like, and tablets. Like and every every child, every child's mind needs to be able to create yes. that imagination. When I was in second grade, my teacher would read a page out of a book every day, and at the end of the semester, she would show us the movie. And when she was reading us uh, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, mm-hmm. by the time she showed us the movie, I said, "Yo." I had vision all this ten times bigger than what I'm seeing right now. Yeah, so like, Uh, yeah, yeah. And 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 that let me know. I said, you know what, I'm on hold. You know, so now it's not happening like that because we give them what they want to see instead of them having to create in their mind what they think it should be. And and those children. And you know what's crazy? A lot of white parents have started understanding this and challenging and creating obstacles. To where their children they would have to you know think. think on that level yeah you know what i'm saying so they're getting it and we're not getting it we're like you know what turn on tv let them watch tv well let me you tell know? you and something that's why as a as a black single mother i raise my children in that capacity where during the school week they don't even get their tablets Te- television is only on the weekends you know what i oh. mean like you've you've got to give them the ability to create and to really think <laughs> and be able to use their minds because otherwise you're just feeding them. And then on top of that, a lot of times people are putting children in front of TV. You don't even know what they're watching. You may put one channel on and then you go somewhere else and it goes somewhere no. else. And oh, you know, man. it's the same with the internet. <laughs> yeah, they're on YouTube you're watching, watching something else. You're, you're giving the child <laughs> the exposure and the power to a world that they may not even identify with or understand. And it really, it, it, it's causing it's causing a lot of dissent. And I just feel like kids are growing up so much faster watching TV, watching music videos, and right. um, especially the way that our people are depicted. A child's young, vulnerable mind, you know, yeah, a, yeah. a young girl sees love and hip hop, let's say, for example, you know, and says, oh, that's how I should look. That's how I should act. That's how, oh, you know? And, and it's just, it's a horrible thing. And a lot I've of- I've seen people, the difference. A lot of times people will be watching um, these like rated R, shows or just things that are completely inappropriate for kids and they think because it's a baby or it's a one-year-old or two-year-old they're not seeing it no because they're that young they're actually receiving it that much more because their minds are like sponges so, thank you, you. and they're hearing it they're... yeah yeah okay yeah. go ahead right. oh, no no you're good i remember when uh freddie first came out mm-hmm. and my, my little brother was about three years old and we had a newborn little sister and you know, he he wasn't supposed to be watching it, and we thought he was sleeping. Mm. But after that movie went off, we woke up the next morning, and he had, he had put a knife in the our, the infant's crib. Oh my god! You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like we were devastated because we like, okay. and, you know. Yeah. But we knew that it was a direct influence of what he had saw. He had seen. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And, and not understanding, you know, yeah. not understanding the difference between real and fake. Yeah, yeah. Impact. So they see cool. everything. So sometimes you think they don't know, because you got to understand something. That the child, a child's brain in an early uh, in, in 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 brain development, yeah, at that time is reacting twice the uh, twice the level as ours is, because it's developing and it's picking up and it's absorbing so much. That's um, right. I th- mm-hmm. the brain, the brain developmental process starts to slow down, like around seven, eight, nine years old. Yeah. But in that early stage, it's you're you're able if you can, uh, if your child at, at that time you can get them into as much as you can because they have the capacity capacity to absorb so much yeah, at that time. Zero and five, like that's why you can teach yeah. people how to swim. You know, they they they're learning they're two right languages. Yeah. At, yeah, yeah. at, at a time. And you try that. You try that right now. Right. It's gonna be like, oh, uh, duh. <laughs> you, you you would have to literally be like in a country like, okay. Yeah. I, I got I gotta learn now. I have you to. Know. Do it now. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true because your your brain slows down, but those first five years are so instrumental in molding. Oh man, that's why I encourage I encourage you everybody to uh te- you know give them a musical instrument, mm-hmm. give them another language, keep them occupied because they have the capacity <laughs> to you know, to sustain that, mm-hmm. that, that level, oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Huge, yeah. If they're not challenged all the way, they're going to, sometimes they're going to slip off. They're going to, you know, do this and that. 
you got to keep them occupied. That's one of the uh, big things with children. I mean, and, but see now, yeah, this is why I'm, uh, fighting, uh, I'm fighting. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I keep. No, no, no. <laughs> Go ahead. I want you to finish your thought. Finish your thought. That's why you're fighting. I want to. That's why I'm fighting to get more community centers as opposed to jails being built. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. More extracurricular activities for these oh. kids and it's programs for them. I got three programs right now inside of high schools. Yeah. Right? In the Bronx. Yeah. You know? And I, I, I want to do more. You know what I'm saying? Well, that takes money. That takes more resources. But I'm trying and to do as much as I can. It takes more community yeah. involvement. It does. It does. If we have yeah. more parents screaming, screaming for these things, you know, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example, right? We even have programs and stuff that are so underutilized. Like my, um, my oldest daughter, who's 18, right? She's yeah. getting ready to start college. All of the college meetings and stuff that I've attended for her at her school, there's very little parental participation. You know, so when it comes to filling out college oh. applications, filling out the financial aid, the, the less involvement you have with your parents helping you, the less likely you are to actually complete that. And you just see so many of our children falling to the wayside because they're like, oh, I don't need college. I don't think I, I, I should go to college. And parents aren't encouraging them to do so. And there's just not enough involvement. When the community gets together, parents get together, the, your voice can make a difference, you know. Um, and I think even like James was pointing out with these three programs that he has going, a lot of times you have programs that are happening and they wind up getting their funding cut because people aren't participating. The children are participating and this is what is needed. We need the children off the streets and out of trouble and into something that's going to mm -hmm. feed their brains, help to feed their intellect and, and, and their passions toward becoming more productive citizens and getting a great career, understanding how to move as a community. So it, it's essential. I really applaud you on that, James. You know, and yeah. I always, and I, the thing is there's a fine balance between the parenting and what we do with the tablets and like the media that the kids are Absolutely. exposed to. You know what I mean? So I always try to keep that in mind because I'm like, I cannot look towards a Cardi B to get positive things all the time. I cannot look towards a meat mill that has, you know, the prison reform. You right. get positive things all the time because he'll say this, right. but he'll go and rap some different. And the kids will listen to what he's rapping and not yes. the actions that he's really doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's a fine balance of being in the children's lives and watching what they're exposed to yes and trying to you know make them understand good and bad what you should do and it's what you shouldn't do you know what I mean? without I'm penalizing like, the star on that screen i completely yeah. agree and i'm living proof that it becomes successful when you do it that way because at a certain point children are going to go their own way anyway right we all have to have our own life experiences your children aren't going to think or act the way that you necessarily want them to but what you can do is instill that moral compass in them, instill the di distinguishing between right and wrong and how to make good choices. And they will utilize that. I mean, having a 22-year-old, 20-year-old- And you know who made it? All successful. I know that my method of mothering, all of them, all of them were limited in TV. All of them were limited in Game Boy. And they used to be like, oh, mom, but so-and-so gets to play every day after school. Well, you don't. And so I'll see you on Thursday or Friday and we could talk about it. <laughs> you see? Working. And it's beneficial. Yeah, you see how you're speaking about the wrong and right things. Yeah. Listen, it's it's essential. You see that how you're speaking about the wrong and right not. things. It's funny. Tell me. Your voice is cut. Nah, but uh, right and wrong things, correct? Yeah. Because, you know, we're on VPR here. Right. I, I got to ask you and James. Okay. So what Takashi did, is it wrong? In regards ah. to... He did the right thing by snitching, right? <laughs> by, okay, by telling hold, hold, on people hold, hold, that hold, have hold, committed hold, crimes, hold. correct? Oh. Hold on, hold I'm on, hold on, hold on. Tackle this. Go ahead. I must ask. I must All ask. Right. Now. No, no, no. I, I just want to ask because we're, 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 we're standing on a moral high ground. But that's now. A, that's, a very, that's a very gray area, right? Yeah. But what we got to do is we got to break it down. Is it? Okay. Number one. Um, I'll let you have them. Th this is, this is, this is the, the big, a big topic right now. Because it's, it's, it has to finally be settled, right? Yeah. When it comes down to it, mm -hmm. if you are a criminal and you have subscribed to a life of crime, okay, and you have taken this oath mm -hmm. of obligation as a criminal. There's an oath as a criminal now. 
<laughs> no, well, it, w w when I say oath, I'm talking about the um, the actual aspect Free? of cr criminality. Like you're, the you, you unwritten just, code. Like, yeah. Like you like you decided that you want to live the life of crime. You, you want to be in this lifestyle. You about this life. Okay. Yeah. Once you decided that, then this is where this this code comes in. The code of the streets. Mm -hmm. All right. Now don't. Now I'm not. I didn't make this exist. up. You know, I didn't make this up. This thing has been going on for a long time. Ever. And, and it kind of goes along with that whole honor among thieves, you know, uh, psychology. Yeah. But the thing is, now, if you are not a criminal and you're a civilian, mm -hmm. <laughs> like a worker, a student, an innocent bystander, yeah, a civilian mm -hmm. has the right to, because see now, a civilian a lot of times is a taxpayer. Right. And ta taxpayers pay the police salary. Right. Okay? So now, if somebody... If, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm, 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 about to get back to, I'm about to get back to the criminal side, but the, <laughs> the, the civilian side is a side that a lot of people kind of get confused with because somebody's like, yo, you better not snitch. But yeah. as, and, and even beyond just the t taxpaying part, as a severe, if somebody shoots your mother, right, and I don't wish that on nobody, right, but your mother gets caught up in the gang crossfire, whatever, you know who did it. Listen, you're gonna tell, you're gonna tell who, who shot your mother, damn right, okay, mm -hmm. or your sister, or your brother, your friend, mm -hmm. okay, because first of all, it sh that should have never happened. Mm -hmm. That's number one, all right. Number two is, I know who did it, and I'm gonna, I, we, we need justice. We always talking about how we want justice, but then we don't want to snitch. Then we don't want to tell. Right. Like, I'm not running up in no crack house. Like, yo, man, that all they all sell crack. We're, right. we're not doing it like that. Right. You know. But if it's a situation where, you know, an innocent bystander, because a lot of times even the person that gets shot, that's in that lifestyle, won't even tell who shot him. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So yeah. So that's that. Now that's the other side of it. You know, the criminal criminal lifestyle. Now, if you're if you're in that lifestyle, then you have to go according to the rules of that lifestyle, which say that you can't tell. So wait a minute. Do you view Takashi as a criminal, or do you view him as a civilian? Because I view him as a paid civilian who pays to be depicted as a criminal. Okay. Now, Takashi Six Nine was inducted like into. No, Shikashi Six Nine was inducted into this blood gang. Right. Okay. Uh, was it Treyway? Mm -hmm. Non-Trey, non-Trey. Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> non-Trey, non-Trey blood. Yeah. My bad. It's My bad. Now, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying that he. No, I, like I know a, it. It's you know, no, it's something like that. But yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying that uh, he was an honorary member or or or, 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 or you know uh, worked his way up the ranks or nothing like that. His affiliate his affiliation with this oh. gang put him in that lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. And under that code of, of ethics and that lifestyle, he, he had an obligation not, not to tell. I completely and agree. I'm just, and I'm just giving you the parameters mm -hmm. and not even, not even saying, well, I'm not trying to hold him to any accountability because as a man, as a human being, as a, an adult, you have to make those own decisions yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? But my whole thing is, you know, in order to avoid that whole situation, man, just, you don't have to be a part of that. That's and right. And we're not condoning that. But you we, see, we we demand justice from uh, the white man, but we don't demand justice in our own neighborhoods when when, when an innocent bystander gets killed. Tell me about it. That's you right. I'm saying so. Justice has to be demanded yeah. on all. Yeah, that, 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 that. Yeah. So collectively, that's where I'm at with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like I'm just I just know how the politics work on both sides. Right. But you can't come at me talking about why why, why did I snitch. And we got an old lady that just got killed over here That's in Crossfire. Right. Yeah, definitely. Now, you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that, I, that, that, I that, you're going to be dealing on that level. Different. Oh, shit. I think the situation is different just because Takashi, I feel, prescribed to that lifestyle for the sake of hip hop and for the sake of the music and the clout that it would bring with it. And so. But now, let me tell you, Takashi played a very dangerous game. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And he, he needs to understand, oh, I'm pretty sure he understands now, but uh, a, a lot of the youth and people in that lifestyle need to really identify with what he did. Mm -hmm. He played a very dangerous game. He could have got killed many times. He still could get killed any day. 
any day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. So that's a very dangerous yeah. game you're playing. It's <laughs> not even. It's really not even worth it. It's not worth it. Is what right. I'm saying. I I agree. Um, I do feel. Yeah. Like no. 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 He, he, it's like a Tom and Jerry thing with him. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, more like Wildy Coyote. <laughs> And the roadrunner. But yeah, yo, it, it's like, you know, the, I, you know, I don't agree with the situation as far as what he did. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because he was already he was already making money overseas before he took on becoming blood when he got back over here, and you know yeah. he's paying the extortion money the whole time. Right. But it, it, it's it is a gray area because, is am I really in a gang if I'm paying you? Right. I'm basically treating you as a partner. Now, I'm, I'm paying. I'm making a hundred thousand a show. I'm giving you thirty thousand, forty thousand. That was the payment for the protection so he could yeah, you know, enroll everybody well, else. No, and you, it wasn't like that, you know, you before got, they put him down. You got OGs right now who literally paid to get an OG pass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you, if you want to be OG, it's a couple thousand dollars, but some people say, yo, it's worth it. It's worth it. You know, it. but you're still, now you're still going to have those who, like, you know, he really don't, he was really not a real OG. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But there's people who are just willing to pay there's people yeah. paying for paying for degrees, yep. paying for OG pass. Like, yep. you know, it, of course, look at look, look at that, look at uh, that big that big scandal. Which one? With exactly. the uh, yeah. with, with all those uh, the actors that got caught paying oh, yeah, for SAT school. Uh, their kids to pass and okay. yeah. Said, yeah, look at that. That showed the me right what money. I needed to say. Oh, oh, you took away opportunities from other people. The right, the right money can get you anything. It, 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 you need a Grammy. You need. <laughs> no, yeah. You need a Webby that. Award. Absolutely. You need to get out of jail. Absolutely. You know, when Fifty Cent, Fifty Cent got that uh, star on the uh, Walk of Fame, they would. Somebody said he paid for it. Yeah. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah. you know, this is what it is now. It's like the people who are doing the hard work now, like yo. This guy just walked through, walked in the door and 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 he gets all the glory. I've right. been here for twenty years, you know. Struggling, right? Yeah. <laughs> putting the work in. I, I think the beautiful oh. thing though about putting the work in is that you really do have that work and that experience behind you. You can pay for things, but like you could pay to be an OG, but an OG mentality, if that's not innately in you, you're not going to be an OG. And so you're not going to be respected as such. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. This, you're going to get caught thing, up at some you, point. You know, pay for your master's degree, but if you didn't actually undergo all of those years of, of, of studying and, and being on you hand. You wouldn't be able to perform the job. Things, yeah, right. Yeah. You're not going to be able to have the same conversation that someone that actually has studied in that field will be able to have. So, you know, I really appreciate the work that goes into it. But I, I do completely agree with you. Um, in my mind, Takashi is a civilian that paid to be a criminal. Oh. And this is this is where we are. We have about 10 minutes left. So um, I did want to ask you about some of your upcoming projects. I know we touched on your documentary. Um, do you have like a timeline on that? And what's the name of it? Okay, yeah. The, the name of the documentary is called Middleman. Mm-hmm. And uh, the name comes from the... Uh, police departments, NYPD and other police departments across this, the nation, are the middlemen in an equation that is enforcing policy that they don't even really understand. Hmm. So this documentary kind of delves into the level of policy that they are pushing mm-hmm. and how, you know, it's easy to say, oh, I'm just doing my job. Right. And guess what? Your job is violating my civil rights. That's right. it's, a, it's allowing uh, yeah. our, our, our community to be penetrated in an illegal fashion. Mm-hmm. It is it is creating this school to prison pipe pipeline revolving door process yeah. that goes into the prison industrial complex. That's you right. know, there's so right. much like mm-hmm. gentrification cannot start unless police activate the process in that community. <laughs> yeah. Gentrification cannot. I like that. Right. No, so it cannot you know, start. It can't. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people don't understand that. Like my documentary goes from police brutality, unlawful detention. It goes into the uh, uh, broken windows theory, in, into Comstat, mm. into the school to prison pipeline, mm-hmm. into the prison industrial complex, into Amen. the the revolving door system, and into reentry back into the into society. Right. So which is a whole other. It goes. It goes all in that whole 360 degree realm of understanding of, of how this happens and how this is happening to us. How they systematically monetize uh, uh, us as yeah. livestock, <laughs> literally. Yeah. You know what much. So we got these privatized prisons being traded on Wall Street, and right. the the commodity is the brothers that sit on the bed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? James, so, I do have a question. Yeah, yeah. 
and it's gonna be pretty. It's gonna be pretty. If you can answer it, I respect it. But if you can't, I respect that too. Okay. What do you think is going to be the breaking point, the change that will unite people of color, or just unite us as people hmm. to stop all these uh, the profiling, the killings? What What will it take? Okay. You, any, you, have, you know, it could be a speculation, of course. Now you're saying when it comes to the police. When it comes to yes, police brutality, what will it finally take in order for these things to actually be stopped? To make it be like, all right, this has been going on in this community too much. Let's put a stop to it. What will you think it will take? Because we're turning okay. on the TV every day now, and we're seeing case yeah. after case. Well, what rally gotta, after rally, good gotta, people, bad people. What's what's going on? You got to look at some of these communities where this where this doesn't happen. Hmm. Okay, you look at some of these Jewish communities. Where this doesn't happen on on, on that level, so the Italian communities, the Asian community, you know, and you look at the a lot of the black communities, and you see a lot of time you see um, projects, mm -hmm. right, or government housing, or mi mini structures. jails, as I call them, you know what I'm saying, mini prisons, any any dwelling that is owned by the city of New York, they they have full autonomy to come mm -hmm. in there and do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Okay, nobody owns that land. Nobody has rights to deny police the ability to come on this property. But yeah. even, and that's just a small factor of it. You know, overall, we have to be able to police ourselves. Talk about um, it. A lot of these communities that are developed on the level where police have not ravished and raped and battered their communities, it's because these communities have, have come together collectively and po police themselves. There's communities right now that the police can't just kick in the door. They got to come see the person who's the community organizer and, right. and say, yo, we got a problem. You know, yeah, and then should be allowed access. Right in Williamsburg, Brooklyn so, is a perfect, is a per that Jewish you know community is solid. They, they can't just come in there like that. They have to come see a representative. Yeah. And That's if that representative says, well, I, I think we're going to handle this on our own. Right. Or we'll bring them by the station later. <laughs> so th th there was a case in, 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 uh, in a Jewish community years ago where a rabbi got arrested mm -hmm. and these guys went to the police station okay in brooklyn and they beat up all of the cops and they got him out of there what and now one shot was fired during this process okay people in the crowd they had like the the paramedics were pulling out cops left and right crazy and now one shot was fired now just imagine if a group of blacks did that they wouldn't even make it in the door. We wouldn't even make it on the same block. Hold on a second. We wouldn't make it on the same block. Yeah, we de we definitely would not. And it's it, it is crazy, Kiana. It, it, it's just we. What I see, like, you watch what happened with Kaepernick kneeling and how they twisted that movement. He saved America. No, he wasn't saying that. He was bringing. It, it, it's just people spin and it how they want to. Everything that we see happening is why Kaepernick was kneeling and you know the reason why I've taught my kids the same in regard uh, to the flag and what it stands for and all of those things because this nation was not built in I'm order sorry, to enable our people for sure and it shows that now look this, this is one here. this is one of the things that made the Black Panthers so successful is that mm -hmm. they took on a responsibility of policing their own community. Yes. Even even as far as taking up arms in order to do so because right. the the whole momentum that the Black Panther Party was built on was against police brutality. Yes. And they said, you know what? A way for us to stop this is not not even allow them to be able to come in here. Mm -hmm. We got this. Y'all not getting no calls from in here. We got this whole thing under, under control. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but you know, the reality of that, it, it, it would be a process in itself. But it's a systematic approach to denying them the 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 level of full autonomy in our communities. Agreed. Okay. Um, now, don't get me wrong. That's going to mess up the that's cash the flow. Way to put it. Yeah. You know, but we need but to be able to put it needs to, it is A change needs to happen. We need to, and we need we need to reroute that two trillion dollar spending ability that we have back into our own communities, so that life isn't overflowing with our people, and we can own our own land, and we can restructure, and we can re-educate, and, and bring these things back to our community that had us so sex successful, and had the first Black Wall Street be built, and give us the ability to not allow it to be destroyed like it was the last time. I mean, I think that is so essential.
Oh, man. Right. Well, you, you know, a lot of people talk about Black Wall Street, right? Yeah. There was actually about 10 Black Wall Streets at the time. And for some reason, there's only one that's talked about now. Right. And, you know, I do a lot of research on all of that, too. Mm-hmm. And they, they, uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, what's the name of it? Um, in, in North Carolina. Oh, man. What's the, um, uh, Greens, Greensboro. Mm-hmm. Was was Greenville, one of the, yeah. that was one of the one of the Black Wall Streets too. Right. And a lot of people don't you know don't give it that credit, but it it, it had a lot, mm-hmm. and a lot came out of there, you know. But if you look at what they did, and that started because of race riot, uh, and and a, and a and a lie when they said that the the, the black elevator operator was was, was uh, touched the white girl, and you know the oh, newspaper a story like that. Yeah, it, it, it kind of really it kind of spiraled into what it became with that riot, but that it wasn't true. And it's sad how all of those black people died and lost everything because the whites were jealous. When all those black soldiers came back from the army, yeah, the, came back from the war, right, and and they had all that money and they was buying all that land and building all these houses. The whites that didn't want to go to war, oh they, yeah, they were like, yo, these guys are are blowing up on us. They got lost money. <laughs> That automatically created the hostile environment, man. Yeah. And they just wanted one thing to start sure. that riot. Yeah. And then, then they, they created they, it. They were just waiting for a reason and ability to kind of set the trigger, you know, pull the yeah. trigger. But I think if we can collectively get it right as a nation, are you talking state by state, community by community, it becomes something that's unbreakable. Like you said, that that that's time, that's money, that's effort. That's a re- you know, restructuring the brain and the, the brainwashing that has been happening and, and kind of uh, relearning how you think and how you approach everything, pretty much. Um, you know, they've, been, they've invested so much money into our demise. Yeah. That that same money could have, could have pulled us out of this. Amen. Uh, a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's a huge undertaking. It's like, you know, but, we always have to try to pull ourselves out of this ditch that we were thrown into. Uh, um, and it's just going deeper and deeper. But James, um, this has been this has been phenomenal. I'm so happy that we were able to get past these technical issues. Please tell us about what you have coming up in the next couple of months and how everyone can follow you and um, you know a little bit more about NAN or how you'd like people to reach you and what they can do. How can they give back and get involved? Well, uh, you can. Any, everybody can reach me, James C B Gray. That's J A M E S. The letter C. The letter B. G R A Y. That's all across the board. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything is the same. And you can even go on Google and just type in James C B Gray, and mm-hmm. everything will pop up. You know what I'm saying? Um, right now, I'm working on a couple of things. Uh, I'm actually uh, working on a documentary, Middleman. Uh, I'm in the process of producing a, a film of, about human trafficking, which is mm-hmm. called. Good girl done bad. Ooh, okay. We need to bring you back and talk about that too, child. Good oh, girl yeah. gone bad. <laughs> so no, 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 no. Good girl done bad. Yeah. Not done bad. bad. Oh, she done, done bad. bad. No, no. She's being done bad. So it's good girl That's done right. bad. Right. You know, but she's she's being kidnapped. She's being sex trafficked and trafficked. Right. You know, we're shedding a light on human trafficking, uh, sex trafficking, organ trafficking. All yeah. the stuff is involved in this film. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm actually playing a politician in this film too um i got uh a really well-known um writer uh who wrote the film all about the benjamins that's writing oh wow i love that movie yeah he's he's actually uh right right now and it's looking really good um and i'm gonna be i'm gonna be producing this and acting in it as well congratulations uh, you know i want to open up some doors for a lot of people in the industry and this is a great way to do it Beautiful. So we had we had already started writing and, and developing, and then coronavirus hit. So mm-hmm. in a, very shortly we'll we'll get back on that. Uh, got some investors that's already uh, loving the concept and ready to roll. Beautiful. So it's, it's gonna be good. Uh, and, uh, I just I just landed a, a agent out in California. Uh, so I, I got shipped. my agent's gonna be lining up a, a, a lot of big things for me. Um, Beautiful. Within the next couple of months, you know. So I'm just really working on. Work, working right I'm writing uh, a book right now called uh, Becoming a Classic Man which is the blueprint for young black males to want to succeed in life Amen. 
and uh, it's a lot of solutions in there. It's a lot that's of awesome. Uh, we need that. Really awesome. Yeah, man. That's what it's about now. It's about solutions. I've been. Oh, on the, oh, that's that sounds like a good read, my brother. I right. enjoy that. We, we know what the problems are. We need some yeah. actual, yeah. actionable solutions. I, 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 yeah. I, you know, I got it down to a science. Yeah. And so I've, I've been promoting this and teaching this, but I'm like, you know what? I got to put it in the book now so more people can read it, more yeah. people can understand it. A whole you manual. Know. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I so it. I'm working on that. And you know, this coronavirus is like a blessing in disguise, man, mm -hmm. because I finally have time, it is. It is. peace and quiet to write and to reflect. And I've got, I've been, I've been so done, so got so much done because when I, before I was running, so man, every day, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I would you literally- time. Yeah. I would literally come home, take a shower, get a couple hours of sleep, back out. And do it again. You know? Yeah. yeah that, that's how I was for like two years straight. Yeah. Same. So now I'm finally having an opportunity to relax, focus, right. write, uh, get things together. And it's beautiful, man. I just exactly what I needed. That's yeah. wonderful. You have I'm been glad we had you stop by. Yes. Yeah, you, honestly, you, you, you really opened my eyes. CB Gray oh, man, listen. Instagram on Facebook. He's tagged in this live. So make sure you hit him up. Um, an, an incredible, incredible young man, actor, activist. Well, I'll, be, I'll be 40 years old next week, okay? <laughs> young man. <laughs> young man. Young man. Well, yeah. I, got a little, I got some grades here. Club. I just got here in October. I had grades since so. I was nine. It's all right, bro. Oh, oh. I had it since I was nine. Now, I, really had now I don't feel that bad now. I don't nah, not bad. at all. Do <laughs> you have any last um, shout outs you want to give? You know, shout out to anybody that is in a progressive state of mind and wants to seek change and be a part of change in their community and their people. Amen. Okay. I, 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 I shout out anybody who is, is taking a young child and becoming a mentor to mm -hmm. somebody who doesn't have one. I, I shout out to anybody who is really about action and not just talking. Shout out to everybody who is interested in learning and being a better version of themselves. Amen to that. What more can I say? Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Tiffin, that is beautiful. We appreciate right, make sure y'all tune in every Thursday to VPR Radio. Thank you for yes. stopping by. Love James, to have you back on, honestly. Us. Again, make sure you guys go and follow us. Let me know. I'll, I'll, be, I'll come back whenever you need me. <laughs> We're bringing you back because we have so many things to touch on. <laughs> I got you. We got to get you out of all of them. You snuck in the human girl trafficking scene, and I said, oh, category. No, my bad, my bad. No. Yeah. <laughs> we discussed, right? We, we absolutely You snuck in at the end, Keanu. Yeah, that's, man. A, yeah. That's, that's a whole episode right there. That's like, a whole, that's a whole episode. Yeah. But this, this has been some great content. Everyone that's watching along on my Facebook Live has definitely, like, some people were like, pull me in. I want to talk. And I'm like, sorry, I know, it's I time know. to talk. But, you know, we... No, we but you know what? We got to do... <laughs> We, we got to do a show about the black family too. That's that's yes. one of one of the big ones from that I that I talk about is the black family. Yeah, and that's something we definitely got to do. That's right, and bringing that back to life. How about that? Yeah, um, I got a solution for it. Good. Yeah. We need it. Right. We need all the solutions, and and we need our people to <laughs> and putting them yeah, into place. We do. We really appreciate you. We're gonna have you back on sooner rather than later because you are full of right. wisdom and content, and and we we like to use our platform you to always. help spread the word and, and spread knowledge and you epitomize that so we really we really respect and appreciate and you. also uplift and that's one thank thing you that you man. did also really well uplift. Uh, thank you guys for having me and I, I, I'm, I'm here anytime right. until until you know the pandemic is over then i gotta get oh, back yeah, then you gotta so we're gonna catch you in between have a great <laughs> day. Happy, day. happy early i got you birthday. all right all right okay. peace Ciao. happy birthday my brother thank you thank you Make sure you guys are following Mr. Gray. Make sure you're following DJ FMI, the one and only. As we are branded, you can find him at DJ FMI, Easy Breezy. Make sure that you subscribe to our VPR Radio page on YouTube, as well as on Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio. We're on Google Play. We are on Apple. We're everywhere that you want to find your favorite podcast. So make sure you favorite us. Leave us some comments. We're always interacting. We love you for watching, and we will be back next Thursday for VPR Radio, the one and only DJ FMI, and your girl, Kiana the Goddess. Stay blessed, stay safe, and I wish you guys many, many blessings and much love. VPR Radio with my girl, Kiana, and my DJ FMI. Don't say I can't. Of a winner, member when I used to eat sardines.
Dean's for dinner I'm so long out of my swag bar My yard ain't 28 by 100 Then why I bother? I know no n- from South Harlem, Brett Farvin Brooklyn, that's on cue when I'm set Marvin You a rapper, you ass betting, a billionaire You talking to him, a social media millionaire Flee Flex, coop the beamers in the bed To all of my ladies and my men And all of my people going in Keep your head up, we doing good Three million, four million worldwide Ain't nothing wrong with puffing no lie And if you with me, let me hear you say Say BPR, DJ FMI, we out.